as I work with students and landowners, I tell them that I have two really basic rules for managing any kind of wildlife. And that is number one, know your plants. And number two, know how to manipulate them. Know which plants are important to your particular species of wildlife, in this case, bobwhite quail, and then know what management techniques can be used to foster that suite of plants. One of the most important seed producers during the fall and winter period for bobwhites are ragweeds. Now the Latin name for ragweed has some special significance as it relates to quail. The Latin name for the genus of ragweeds is called ambrosia. And if you're a student of Roman or Greek mythology, you know that ambrosia is the food of the gods. And so apparently the Romans thought quite a bit about quail like I do. These are really good seed producers for quail. One reason they're so highly touted is because they shed their seeds just about the time quail season opens. So there's a lot of ragweed seed on the ground about the 1st of November. Here at the Rolling Plains Quail Research Ranch in Western Fisher County, we're curious about how our management techniques affect seed production of Western ragweed. And so we've monitored, monitored ragweed seed production over the last four years. We found out some pretty interesting things. When we burn an area, typically we increase seed production by twofold. That will that'll maintain that type of advantage for at least two years. So a burn at the right time of the year, and typically this is February or March for us, we can double seed production. We're also talking about quail oases. We'll refer to these in another webisode, but one of the advantages of quail oases is that we increase seed production by focusing water, by harvesting water, we increase seed production on western ragweed four to six times. So we can really use some of the management that we do to increase the seed yield of this valuable species of ragweed. Our primary species of ragweed on rolling plains rangelands is western ragweed. Here I am standing in a sea of western ragweed. If I pull one of these plants up, you'll notice that it's a deeply rooted perennial. It is rhizomatous. In other words, it has these underground stems. If I broke this one off, it reproduces mainly vegetatively. The seeds are important, but most of the growth in a ragweed stand comes from the rhizomatous growth. If we look at this plant, and I'll show you this one versus some other leaves in a minute to make the distinction between the species, but if I was to say, in your opinion, how many seeds does this western ragweed have on it right now? Within 10, I'll give you five seconds. And the answer is none. It didn't have any seeds right now. Here we are in the middle of August. These seeds that this plant bears won't produce, they won't mature until about uh, mid-October to late October. When people see this part, these are the male flowers. This is where the pollen's produced. If you have suffered from hay fever, this is what's getting you, the pollen from the ragweed here. The female flowers and where the seeds will be are, will be down in here. So a little bit later on, this plant has not begun to set seeds just yet, but when it does, you'll find seeds, one seed at each one of those locations. So a well-endowed ragweed is only gonna produce maybe 20 to 25 seeds at a time. It's not nearly as prolific a seed producer as most people think. It's kind of an orphan stepchild of the ragweed group, if you will, and it's this one. This one is called field ragweed. Some people call it burr ragweed. We refer to it in the quail world as the great imposter. I can't tell you how many times I've been on a landowner's property and he'll say, well, I've got plenty of ragweed for food. And I burst his bubble when I say, yeah, but you got the wrong ragweed. This one is just really not much good at all for quail. It looks like Western ragweed. I'll show you the difference between the leaves in a minute so you can tell the difference. But the seed that it produces is not the same type of seed that Western ragweed is. It's more of a burr almost like a small grass burr, and quail just don't have any affinity for it. So this one, not too good. The other two species of ragweed are much better. Now, I'm not gonna say this has absolutely no value to quail because anything that's growing provides some screening cover. So I'll give it credit for a little bit of that. As far as food production goes, just not much good for Bob Whites. I've got the two species of ragweed here. I've got Western ragweed in this hand field ragweed in this hand. Once you see the two side by side, they're pretty easy to, to note the differences. Look at the leaves. The leaves of the western ragweed aren't nearly as finely dissected as what the leaves of the field ragweed are. 
So if you see this type of leaf, think western. If you see the more finely dissected or frilly or lacy leaf, think field ragweed. Third and last ragweed that we'll discuss is called giant ragweed. Here I am in a stand of it. It may assume heights of 12 feet or more in the right situations. You're always gonna find it in the creek beds of the low-lying areas, sometimes called bloodweed. It's the largest by far of the ragweeds we'll talk about. Also has the largest seed. So it can be an important ragweed for quail in these riparian situations.